The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth. Though we the believers have been termed out as Alakene Ketesis in this royal family of God being termed out as church. We the believers are not aware or neither aware of the things and the practices pertaining to that great Jehovah of our Lord. The only reason why we are not aware is because we have been not called out from the rational species so that we could be thoroughly trained over 1500 years the ritualisms what Lord has intended for them to stay pure the way when they are approaching that great Lord. But we came along here for only one simple truth by grace, by faith alone in Christ alone. And we are not aware what were those rituals, what were those practices and what was in fact even indeed called as circumcision for them to be kept pure for the covenant. We are just going around for those things which we do not know the practices and the rituals of that Old Testament time, what Lord has trained them and consecrated them over 1500 years. Right from the beginning of Moses in 1440 BC, given them Leviticus Code, till to the appearance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in BC 4. Because we are the men who have been called out, crippled one, crimpled or call for the repletized because for the necessity of our Lord bear with for this church age. And that doesn't mean to say Lord has left us helpless or lawless. Lord has placed us upon a greater law, upon a new law. The new law of the indwelling mental ministry of God, the Holy Spirit, wherewith it can train you up more accurately, more speedily. The law was been written for them by whom? The men who have been endured by the ministry of blood, God, the Holy Spirit, and there were only certain few, not less than one or two percent of that entire Israelite nation could have the enjoyment ministry of blood, God, the Holy Spirit indwelling in them. No, it was not at all indwelling. It was only bestowed upon them, and the work got to what they were out, like the kings, the rulers, the priests, and the designers of the temple. But the one who has written that Old Testament law, or the Old Testament, what we can look around today in our books, in our, in our hands, was a ministry of endowment upon those authors. But now we have been given the ministry of enlightenment, the permanent indwelling of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that we could not be in an excuse to tell to Lord God the Father that, Lord, we do not know what were your rituals, what were your practices, what were your trends. We are not in a place to plead ignorance or to regret after our death, Lord, I would have been better because I was not aware that we do not know that there was a permanent and willing ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our lives. We are under a new law. The new law demands the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, dear brethren, it is very much essential for us to listen only to the distinct testimony of the eternal spirit in the world. But we have to allow our minds to get thoroughly down under the action and the influences of the circumstances that we are going through. But we are not listening to the point of considering the Bible doctrine as number one priority. We are listening to the scientific speculations, the trends which they think it is great for them in the sight of Jehovah. Following that, Lord has only told us, cryonics, Lord has only taught us about about this cloning, Lord has only taught us about these aliens. That's what they want to tell. And that has been taught by the Roman Catholics and pastors, followed by the Protestants as well. Some of the morons who claim that the resurrection is nothing but cloning or cryonics. The evolution is not by God's word, but by Big Bang Theory. And the point is that Lord is not going to come second advent, but he's going to just appear and go and take over the saints. Maybe some part is true, but the other part they say they're never going to come again. What are these very doctrines that are coming around, looking upon the outward circumstances, they're not able to look upon the listening for the testimony of the eternal spirit. 
if this is one extension of the failure for them to divide the doctrine over sound exegesis, the other end is that they are not capable of coming out from their old ritual practices, not of the Old Testament, but for their own Gentile gods, which are not gods, but demands. Bitterness, jealousy, hatredness, revenge tactics. The same thing, what they used to follow before the other gods or the other demands, the same thing they are thinking when they come to Christianity, they should follow. Not live out those old age old practices. Once again, they want to follow the same rituals. Once again, they want to follow the same trends. Because when a beggar was been invited to the banquet, he would have changed himself thoroughly what was necessary in the sight of Lord. But he thought, if I go naked also, what nothing will happen. But what did Lord do? He threw him out. Naked in the sense, though we have Bible doctrine, we cannot be ignorant of being Bible doctrine or the application of Bible doctrine to our lives, what we learn through the word of the Lord. We can never be ignorant of such kind of a things, what Lord has called for us to the praise of his glory and his grace. Though the Bible has been given in our hands, it is our duty, it's our work, it's our responsibility laid on upon us that we need to be faithful enough to Bible doctrine to his word. But what is happening today? We are not worried to know about His Word. Instead of listening only to the distinct testimony of the eternal Spirit in the Word of the Lord, they had allowed their minds to get through, down under the actual influences of outward circumstances. Instead of standing with a firm foot on the everlasting rock of divine revolution, which is the word of the Lord, though the heaven and the parish will not is but not his word, they are struggling amid the billows of life's stormy ocean. In a word, they had for a moment fallen under the power of death, so far as their minds were concerned, as it is no marvel if their hearts were sad and their communications gloomy because of not having the environment ministry in their life. Dear brethren, does it not sometimes happen that you and I in like manner get down under the power of things seen and temporal instead of living by faith in the light of things unseen and eternal? Yes, even we who profess to know and believe in the risen Savior, who believe that we are dead and risen with him, who have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, do not we at times sink and cover? And do we at such moments stand in need of a risen Savior's challenge? Does it not often happen that when we come together or when we walk by the way of communications are anything but what they ought to be? It may be gloomily moping together over the depressing circumstances which surround us, the weather, the prospects of the country, the states of the business, the poor health, or the difficulty of making ends meet, anything and everywhere in short, but the right thing. Among all these things, we are not capable of comprehending the word of the Lord. And the things concerning Jesus, we are not able to seek the living one. And we are not able to search upon that strong, everlasting rock of divine revolution to rise the Savior's challenge. We are instead dead and buried in our own lust patterns. Like the last patterns of the tolls in nature, which was been great among the Gentiles, among the heathens. And that is what it is not happening today in our pulpits, a correction to make them to believe and to consider what is the truth in Christ that you and I have to enjoy, dear brethren. Ultimately, we do have many things in this life that we need to correct. But we are not correcting them purely because we are not interested to come out of our ignorance, purely because we have not to be obedient for God's word. And this is what it is happening today in our lives. Without the proper mentorship of that God, the Holy Spirit, without the proper obedience of that God's word and fear of Jehovah upon our lives, we are leaving behind an impact of those things in this angelic conflict. When we appear at the judgment seat of Christ, those who have been given the same caliber and the same capacity and the same privilege to rule with Christ, we have lost it in vain. 
We have lost you to such kind of a cheap substitutes. Though you wipe and wheel at the judgment seat of Christ, as a believer, I'm telling when you lose your eternal rewards, you're not going to get it back. So today is a time for you to correct and look upon those parts, to look and to consider that now you have been given the royal family of God. You have been given the permanent indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to correct, because you have been given the enlightenment power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not endowment power. Provided you do have a desire to know the truth. And if you're not interested to look upon these things, Lord help you. If you know not the true word of the Lord, there the people will perish. If you not heed the instruction of Jehovah, the soul of Jehovah will be absolutely strained. And he will strain you into dissolution and horrible things. Before the wrath of the Lord could abide upon us, be careful to correct, though you are a believer in Christ. And look upon his terms and conditions and know, know the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Know and thoroughly investigate the truth so that the truth can set you free. So which way you want to go, you decide. In the next day, we shall continue our discourse. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with this the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge. Sorry, Lord, for asking the question and Father. Amen.